Okay, so a lot of people seem to enjoy the last DaVinci Resolve tutorial I made, which is why I'm putting together this one, and I'm gonna be talking about a few more extremely useful editing tips that will save you even more time. I feel like one of these a lot of people might already know about, but the other ones I basically haven't heard anyone talking about, which is weird because they're extremely useful. And the cool part is you can combine all of these tips into one big, super time-saving tip. So if you find yourself using the same assets like graphics, overlays, logos, or sound effects across different videos, instead of having to look for them and importing all of them individually into every new project, you can use the power bins instead. Some of you probably know what the power bins are for, but for those of you that don't, anything you drag into the power bin section is going to become available across every single one of your projects. So you can make a bunch of folders and organize and drag everything you use on a regular basis into here, and you won't have to worry about importing it all over again next time you create a project, because it's gonna be waiting for you on the side. Now, that on its own is already a huge time saver because you're essentially building out your own library of assets that you can easily access for every new project. So if you aren't using the power bins yet, I really recommend it. So that's all great, but this next tip is where things start getting even better. Let's say you use the same logo in every one of your videos and you always drag it into your timeline, resize it and move it to a specific spot. Now that you have it in your power bins, what you can do is double click on it, which is going to open it in the preview window, then go over to the inspector tab and change any of the properties that you want. Now that you've done that, any time you drag your logo onto the timeline from the power bin section, all of the properties you changed are already gonna be set up exactly how you need them, and they're going to be consistent throughout every project. There is one more way of doing this, and in some situations, it might be a bit better. If you're working on a project and already have an asset dialed in the way you like it, you could just straight up drag it from your timeline and put it in the power bins. Also, this is gonna be a little bit technical, but it's something very important to mention. When it comes to changing the position and scale of visual assets, you have to take into account the aspect ratio and the resolution of your asset. So for the example of the logo I just showed you, the logo file had the same aspect ratio and resolution as my timeline, so the changes that I made to its position and scale settings carried over correctly when I put it on the timeline. However, if I use this logo, which looks the same, but the file itself has a 1x1 one one aspect ratio and a resolution of 2160 by 2160 which are different than my timeline, even if the settings I change in the preview monitor look right, when I drag it into the timeline it won't be in the right spot because there's this mismatch of dimensions. So if you're working with an asset that has different dimensions than your timeline, you're better off dropping it in the timeline first before making any changes to the settings, then positioning it however you like. Then you can grab it from there and drag it into the power bins to make sure that it's placed correctly relative to the dimensions of the timeline and not the source file itself. This only applies to visual assets though, so you won't have to worry about it with any audio. Maybe you got a sound effect that you always use at the same volume. When it's in your power bins, select it, go to the inspector and change the volume to what you usually have it at. Now it'll be ready like that for every project. Another example is this film burn overlay that I use as a transition sometimes. Normally I have to change the blending mode of it from normal to screen anytime I want to use it. Except I've got it set up like that straight in the power bins so I don't have to worry about it when I make a new project. So I'm not going to continue giving you examples because there's just way too much that you can do with this tip and honestly the best way to find out what works is to just play around with it for yourself. It basically not only gives you the ability to create your own library of assets but to also customize all of their settings and have them be ready to use exactly the way you like them for every new project. And even if you already think that's cool enough, we have one more thing to talk about. So I showed you that film burn that I use as a transition. The thing is, I usually use a specific part where the screen is completely white as the part that hides the cut between my clips. So instead of having to drop it in my timeline and look for that specific part every time, then trying to line it up perfectly, what I do is I double click on it in the power bins to open it in my preview monitor, and then I can find the exact point where the screen is white and click M to drop a marker inside the clip itself. Then I drop two more markers at the points where I want my transition clip to start and end. To take it one step further, I can go to the first marker for the start of my transition and hit I to add an endpoint, then go to the marker for the end of the clip and hit O to add an out point. 
Now, by hovering over the clip in the preview window, I can grab this little icon here and only drag the video track onto my timeline with all of the markers already positioned where I need them, the clip cut down to the exact size I want my transition to be, and all I have to do is line up the middle marker with the cut between the clips and it's positioned perfectly to work as a transition. You can do this exact same process of adding markers and in and out points to anything in your power bins, like for example, you can drop markers markers and set in and out points for specific parts of a sound effect or a song that you usually need to line up with other stuff going on in your video. And when you combine this tip with the previous two, you're basically creating this super customized library of personal assets. So usually when I give out editing tips, I say that they're probably going to save you a ton of time or hours, but for these ones, I can absolutely guarantee it. If you don't end up saving a load of time and resolve because of these, you can feel free to come back to this video, hit the like button, and then pick a fight with me in the comments. Obviously, that's a joke. I don't really want to argue with anyone, so if you know another way to apply the tips I talked about in this video, feel free to share them. Still, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave them below, and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. And with all of that out of the way, as always, thank you so much for watching this video until the end, because it really does mean a lot to me. If you haven't done so, consider sticking around by subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.